Hello everyone. Welcome back to the Lee County Library of Science Club. It's great to have you with us again. Just want to remind you, please make sure you have your parents' permission and some supervision when you're doing these experiments with us. Yes, welcome, welcome back. And what you just saw was actually an image from my phone projected through this box onto our whiteboard here. That's right. This week, we're going to build our very own homemade smartphone projector. Now, it may seem crazy that you can actually make a projector out of just some household items and your smartphone, but the unique properties of light and light waves make that a reality. So what is light? Well, light is actually a type of electromagnetic wave. We've talked a lot about electricity and magnetism and what they are, but both of them, electricity and magnetism, create a sort of field around the source of the electricity or the magnetism. Now, when those two things interact with each other, the electrical field and the magnetic field, when they come together, they release energy in the form of a wave, which is also called radiation. Now, what do we mean when we actually say a wave? Well, it is actually what it sounds like. When you think of waves on the ocean, you think of water moving like this, right? Well, that's actually the same thing that's happening. We have energy moving through space, and it moves in the form of a wave. Now, these waves are defined by two main characteristics. The wave length, meaning how much distance there is between one top and the next top. Okay, from crest to crest is a wave length. And then the other thing is the frequency. And that is how fast are those waves moving? How frequently does the top of a wave pass through a certain point? Now, generally, a shorter wavelength is going to have a higher frequency because there are more waves closer together. Now, there is actually a large spectrum of electromagnetic waves beyond just what we see with our eyes. And they start all the way down at the lowest frequencies with radio waves. And then as you increase in frequency, the waves actually change properties. There are seven main kinds of electromagnetic waves, and they are radio waves, microwaves, infrared rays, visible light, ultraviolet rays, x-rays, and gamma rays. Now you've probably heard of most of those, right? Obviously, radio waves are how we listen to the radio, how our cell phones transmit a signal. All those things are accomplished with radio waves, which is the lowest frequency on the spectrum. Next up is microwaves, which, yes, is exactly what is used in your microwave that you cook with at home. The next category up the spectrum is known as infrared, which you've probably heard about. It's related to heat. Okay, you can't see when something is hot necessarily, but it is giving off energy in the form of electromagnetic waves, and they are infrared. Now, you may hear in that name the word red, and that's because infra means below, and that's exactly what it is. Infrared rays are in those frequencies just below the visible light spectrum. So, after infrared comes our visible light, the light and the colors that we can actually see. Now, not surprisingly, above infrared, the first color with the lowest frequency or the longest wavelength is red. And you can actually follow those frequencies right up the rainbow. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet. That is how the frequency spectrum lays out, and that's actually why we see the rainbow in those colors. And that's something we'll get to in a little while. 
Now above the visible light spectrum, we said is ultraviolet. Again, the name is related to its position on the spectrum. Ultra meaning top or above ultraviolet. So above violet are ultraviolet rays, which I'm sure you've heard of, right? Because the sun produces a lot of ultraviolet rays and they are actually what we need to be wary of and why we wear sunscreen. Now, the next form is known as x-rays. Exactly what, we, what it sounds like we use it for, right? When you go to the doctor to get an x-ray, the light is, has such a high frequency that it actually can penetrate all the way through your body, and that's what lets them see what's going on inside your body. And that's also why you have to wear that nice vest over your heart and over other sensitive areas because in a high enough concentration, those x-rays can be dangerous. But your doctor knows what they're doing and they're very safe about it. So don't be afraid of getting an x-ray. Just know that it's just another form of electromagnetic waves. Now the last one at the highest end of the spectrum, okay, the highest frequency, the shortest wavelengths, those are gamma rays. Now, everybody knows about gamma rays, right? They turn you big and green and angry! Okay, they don't actually do that. That's a comic book and science fiction and please, please, please don't try to expose yourself to gamma rays. They're actually pretty dangerous and not really something that you want to be messing with, okay? Leave that to Bruce Banner and the other Avengers. Sounds good? Good. Now I said before we'd talk a little bit about rainbows, okay? And rainbows are actually a visual demonstration of that spectrum, okay? And those range of frequencies. Now light, normally what we call white light, okay, is all the colors mixed together in one bunch, okay? And they're all coming parallel with each other, but light waves can be what we call refracted and reflected. I'm sure you all know what I mean when I say light can be reflected, right? You can see yourself in a mirror, if you've ever had a mirror or even the front glass of your phone and you hold it up, you can see right there the lights from the ceiling are being reflected at you, right? Light is hitting the glass and being reflected back. Now the other thing that happens with light is it gets what we called refracted. And refraction is light not bouncing but instead being bent. And this actually happens because those light waves move at different speeds through different materials. When it's just moving through the air, it's moving at its normal constant of 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second, which, just so you know, is really, really super fast, okay? But when it goes through certain other materials, especially things like glass, it actually slows down just a tiny bit, okay? Not enough that you'd actually notice it, not that we could tell a difference between its normal speed and its slow down, but it does slow down just enough. And that change in speed causes it to change direction just slightly. Now, why does that happen? And that's because of those wavelengths we talked about. The shorter wavelengths means it actually moves or gets redirected less because the wavelengths are hitting that glass faster and so they move less. The longer wavelengths take more time to pass through the glass and get affected more. So what did we say before? Red has the lowest frequency and the longest wavelengths, right? Violet has the highest frequency and the shortest wavelengths. So, when light passes through 
a refractive material, it goes through and actually gets bent. And that's why we see a rainbow. Light is being refracted by moisture in our atmosphere, and it spreads out into its colors because the violet moves faster and the red moves slower, and so the light, the light that was all traveling parallel with each other gets spread out. Now, how in the world does all of this help us make a smartphone projector? Well, the way we project things is through what is called a lens. Now this is a magnifying glass, and what's the inside glass part is a lens. A lens is any transparent object used to focus or disperse light. In other words, refract the light. Now we have two types of lenses. We have convex, which means that the center of the lens is wider, okay? And a convex lens is used to focus light because when the light hits the first curved side, it spreads, it moves towards the middle. Okay, and then when it hits the other curved side, it goes back straight. So what's happening is you have lots of light hitting at different points on the lens, and it all bends toward the middle, and then when it hits the other side, it goes back to straight. Okay, and that's how we actually magnify things. This is a magnifying glass. It is a convex lens. The other type of lens is called concave. Concave means that instead of the middle being wider, the middle is actually skinnier, okay? And so what's happening here? The light is instead dispersed because it hits this side, and like we said, everything's coming straight. It hits this side, and it gets turned up or down. And then once it hits the other side, it goes back straight again. So in this case, light hitting here spreads out and then goes straight again. So a convex lens is used to make things that you see far away appear closer, and a concave lens is used to make things that appear close look farther away. And those two things are used every single day by billions of people around the world in the form of eyeglasses. If you're nearsighted and you can't read the things that are far away, you have convex lenses in your glasses to help you see far away. If you're farsighted and you have glasses for reading up close, then you have lenses that are concave, okay? And they actually make the page appear farther away so that your eyes can focus on it more easily. So that concept of making things appear closer and bigger than they actually are is how we're going to create our projector. We actually have two lenses Okay, they're both magnifying glasses, and we're going to use them together to make the small image on my phone appear bigger by sending the light that is coming out of my phone that would normally go into your eye is instead going to project out of the phone. It's going to pass through one lens, focusing it a little more, and then it's going to pass through the other lens, and we're going to end up with a larger picture. Sounds pretty cool, right? Let's do it. So the first thing you're going to need is simply a smartphone. Any type of small screen that you can watch a video on or look at pictures on. Okay, next thing you'll need is a cardboard box. You want it to be pretty small, okay? It needs to be long enough that the light can actually travel a little bit before it passes through our lenses but it needs to be small enough that light is not being wasted inside the box. You need, obviously, a magnifying glass, preferably two. If you only have one, it gets really hard to focus, but if you have two, that can help you. You'll need a utility knife to cut the box. Please make sure you're working on this with your parents. Just again, reminder, you'll need some tape. You probably want some clear tape 
and something like duct tape, but you don't have to. You can use one or the other. And you'll need a marker. So the first thing you're going to do is put your magnifying glass over the end that you want to project out of. You're going to hold it there and draw the outline of your magnifying glass. Next, you're going to cut out that circle. Now, you don't want to cut exactly this circle because then your hole is going to be larger than your magnifying glass. So you're going to want to cut uh, like a quarter or a half an inch in from your line. This is where you're going to need the utility knife. So definitely talk to your parents about making it work. So now you should have a hole that is a little bit smaller than your magnifying glass. Sound good? Next, you're going to put that magnifying glass over the hole and you're going to tape it down. There, now we've got a magnifying glass that's not moving. Next, you're going to take your other magnifying glass and don't worry if you don't have a, re a rectangular one. A round one will work just fine. You're going to take your other magnifying glass and you want to hold the end of the handle up here and you're going to mark about how wide it is and now you're going to cut a slot along this lid. The width of that handle. And this is what we're going to use to focus our projector. So now we should be able to put this magnifying glass through the lid, and when the lid is closed, we have that handle sticking out. Now once you've got all that made, you're actually pretty well set up. The last thing you're going to do is find a video on your phone, like our Lee County Library Science Club videos. Okay, you're going to start playing it. You're going to put it inside the box, leaning up against the back. You want to close the box, and this is where you're going to use the other tape, because now we want to try to shut out any extra light from getting in. So you want to tape up your ends nice and tight to make sure that the light inside the box can't escape. Now our last step is to find a surface we can project it on. Here I have a whiteboard in our meeting room that I'm going to be using. But you can use a bed sheet or if you have a nice white wall, something like that. So I'm going to set up my box at the end of the table and I need to actually angle mine up a little bit so that it can project up onto our wall. I'm going to turn out the light. Now you can see there's something up there but it's really not clear yet, is it? And that's why I have my magnifying glass in here to be able to focus with. You can see as I move it the picture gets clearer and fuzzier, right? So if I move it to a certain point, there. Now it's about as clear as it can be. Once you find your good focus point, you can take your tape and tape up over that slot and lock that magnifying glass into place. And now you have a projector. Now I'm sure all of you are wondering and telling me and screaming at me, hey, it's upside down. Why is it upside down? Well, let's talk about that. So how did our image end up upside down? Well, for starters, it's because my phone is a little bit simple and I can't make the image stay upside down. It always flips right side up. If you have a phone, that can lock its image in the upside down position that will make life much easier for you. But how does that image actually get flipped? Well, when it's passing through a magnifying glass, we talked about it's taking parallel light waves and trying to focus them on one point so that you can see the light coming this way being focused towards your eye to make what's over here appear bigger. But what happens does the light just stop when it reaches that point? No, right? The light comes focused and it keeps going past it. So what was at the top gets pointed towards the middle and then flips upside down, right? What was at the top passes through and goes to the bottom. 
what was at the bottom passes through and goes to the top. So whenever the image passes through a lens, at a certain point, it's upside down. And believe it or not, that actually happens in your eye. Okay, inside your eye, there are lenses, and they actually flip the image outside of you upside down. So what your brain sees is upside down, and your brain, all on its own, because we're so smart, flips it right side up again. Now, lenses can be used for lots of other things beyond just homemade projectors. I already mentioned eyeglasses. They can also be used for magnifying glasses. But much bigger things like microscopes and telescopes and even lasers use lenses to focus light by refracting it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you next time. Bye.